So we're gonna expound a little bit on your knowledge of titration curves from Chem 20 and add a little bit more to it here for Chem 30. So this is what you, the extent of your knowledge was in Chem 20, we had sort of really one titration curve, but if we kind of flip the titrate in the sample, then we kind of got a flipped curve, right? So we've got these two diagrams that shows, okay, if, if I've got my hydrochloric acid, let's say, or strong acid uh, as my sample, and I'm adding a base to that, then, then I'm gonna get these these flat regions where the pH doesn't really change very much and then with a very small volume I'm going to get a, a real big spike in pH uh, and then I'm going to be up here in the in the base region of the of the pH scale and then if we were to flip the sample in titrum we'd have that but the thing uh, we'd have this curve here but the thing to point out was that the equivalence point which is the middle of this this peak um, <clears throat> uh, is is uh, at a pH of 7 and so this shows that the, the strong acid with the same concentration is being neutralized by a strong base with the same concentration. And also for this. Uh, but now that we've learned a lot more about equilibriums and about weak acids and how much they ionize and, and uh, equilibrium constants and, and stuff like that, uh, we can now introduce uh, titrations to you that involve weak acids and weak bases. Uh, so these are the, the four kind of uh, monoprotic uh, types of uh, titration curves that you need to know. Monoprotic meaning that it's a, a substance that can only donate one proton if it's an acid or only accept one proton if it's a base. Uh, <clears throat> and so if I have a titration where I do a titration of a weak acid with a strong base, so I'm adding the strong base to the weak acid, uh, my weak acid pH is going to be higher to start. And then as I titrate this, I'm still going to get this peak and the sharp rise with a small amount of volume. And I'm going to have an equivalence point, which is the middle of that peak. Um, but what you'll notice here is that with a weak acid being titrated with a strong base, the equivalence point is now shifted up into the base region of the pH scale, something above 7. And same thing here if I switch them, but still titrating, or now I'm titrating a strong base with a weak acid. Uh, I get my curve that looks like this. I'm going to end off with a pH that's a lot higher than a strong base would have. Uh, and so because of that, it shifts my, equi my equivalence point above 7 again. If I flip it around to where now I'm titrating with a strong acid with a strong base, you can see that I also get this shift of an equivalence point, but now it's below 7. So you can see on the diagrams here how I have that uh, labeled. And so those are for monoprotic acids and bases that we're using in titrations. Finally, we can do uh, a titration with substances that are polyprotic. So um, something like uh, the carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus, is considered to be polyprotic because it can accept two protons uh, uh, onto it. And uh, because of that, we're going to get two equivalence points from that. So you can see here I've got a diagram that shows I've got two equivalence points. Um, I'm titrating this weak acid with a strong base in this case, uh, which maybe is uh, carbonic acid, H2CO3. It's got two protons that it can donate uh, to a strong base, let's say hydroxide ions. And, uh, and I, would, I would end up with a titration curve that looks something like that. So um, I'm gonna come back with a, another clip and a, a little bit more information as it relates to polyprotic uh, titration curves, as well as these monoprotic ones. Uh, but specifically, certain regions found on, on these curves, what do they mean and, and what do we call them? How do we identify them? Uh, so a little bit more information coming your way uh, in the next clip, so hang tight. Uh, be right back with a, a, a new example. Buffers and buffer regions is what we're going to talk about in this clip. And uh, you can see I've got some titration curves up here on the board, uh, a little bit enlarged from the ones that we had previously just so you can kind of see things a little bit better and then I've labeled some things and I'm just gonna kind of take you through these diagrams a little bit. So first of all, I've got a weak acid reacting with a strong base here. You can see my titration curve with the equivalence point above seven. Uh, and then this is the chemical reaction that's occurring, this bronsted bauer equation. And you can see that as I add OH minus to this solution, I am going to start making F minus. Now at some point in this area right here though, I'm not gonna have enough, I haven't added enough hydroxide ions to react all of the hydrofluoric acid, ion, uh, acid molecules that's present in the solution. 
And so as I start to add OH- to this solution, I start to have now a solution where I've got a weak acid with its conjugate base in the solution together. And this is what creates a buffer. If you take a look at the, the definition here, a buffer is a solution that contains a weak acid with its anion or its conjugate base. And so uh, that's how you can identify them is saying, okay, does this solution contain a weak acid and its conjugate base? And if it does, uh, then, then you have a buffer. But what does a buffer do? What does a buffer mean? Well, a buffer uh, does just that. It buffers pH. It makes it so that the pH stays at a relatively constant level. And so if I add more hydroxide ions to this, you can notice that the pH stays relatively constant for a set amount of volume. But at some point, if I add enough hydroxide to this, the buffer is going to run out, and then that's when I see a sharp rise in the pH uh, in this titration. So this area right here where the buffer or the, the pH is, is relatively constant, that's what we identify as a buffer region. And this is a buffer, a weak acid with its conjugate base. If you take a look at this example over here the, with the polyprotic uh, weak acid, carbonic acid with a strong base, you can see I've got my two equivalence points. Uh, but because I've got these two flat regions here, I've got two actually two different bronsted lowry equations that are occurring. So as I'm adding my hydroxide ions to this, the first reaction that's going to take place is this one where I've got the carbonic acid reacting with the hydroxide. And I make my hydrogen carbonate ions in solution, and so this is a weak acid with its conjugate base, a buffer region. And this is a buffer. You can see the pH stays relatively constant. When I add enough hydroxide, though, all of the H2CO3 now has reacted. The buffer has run out and so I get a sharp rise in pH. But the interesting thing with this one now is now I develop actually a second buffer region here where I get HCO3 minus, which is still a weak acid, it's not a very good one, but it's still a weak acid with its conjugate base. And so because this is the, weakest, the, the strongest acid that's present in the solution, when I add hydroxide to it, it's now gonna start to react with that substance as the bronsted lowry acid. It's gonna make the, the conjugate base and the conjugate acid over there on that side and I start to get a weak acid with its conjugate base in solution. So this is another buffer region. Uh, and, and so this is actually applicable to humans and, and our blood. So our blood has to sit within a range of 7.2 to 7.4. And it's a very small range. Anything below or above that is fatal to humans. And so our blood is made up of a variety of different types of buffers. And this is one of them, carbonic acid with uh, hydrogen carbonate ions. And all it really does essentially is this, is that if you ingest something that's acidic, then that acid is going to react with the hydrogen carbonate ions. And those hydrogen carbonate ions are going to turn into carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. Uh, if I drink something that's slightly basic, then that carbonic acid is going to react with uh, that base, turning it into, uh, turning the carbonic acid into hydrogen carbonate ions and the process just kind of bounces back and forth. And, and uh, with all these different buffers in our blood, we just kind of move back and forth along these buffer zones and these buffer regions where we are able to kind of maintain a relatively stable pH within our bodies. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to point out on these curves is that these regions right here up at the top, these are not considered, they're flat regions, but they're just flat regions because uh, it's just a strong base now. I have a strong base here with no other things that it's able to react with. They've all been neutralized by the, the strong base. This is just excess stuff. So these top regions over here on the top, these are not considered buffer regions. Okay. Uh, if I were to have a, a, another titration curve uh, that's a little bit flipped, <clears throat> something like that, then these would be buffer regions. And that final one right there would not be a buffer region. So uh, that's all you got to know about buffers and, and buffer regions. Um, some chemical reactions there for you to, to kind of take a look at and make sure I'm doing them correctly, uh, as well as a little bit of application to, to our human bodies and the chemistry behind uh, what's going on inside of our bodies is kind of neat to know. So uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching.